Hey everybody, Debbie here with another Stratega game analysis. In this uh, game, we're going to learn an important bluff tactic that every player should know how to do. All the good players know this tactic. They probably don't even uh, use it enough. Uh, it's helped me win a lot of games. I love doing this bluff over and over and over again uh, in my games. And uh, uh, it helps me win a lot of games. So... We'll learn this. I think it's probably the most important bluff you can do in the game of Stratego. And so let's uh, watch this game and, and we'll see we'll see how uh, this bluff works. All right, this game was, uh, I spent this game up 200%. So both players, uh, myself and my opponent, were rather tentative in this game. All right, I open up with some uh, just some scouts trying to find some targets. I don't mind using a couple scouts early on to find targets, and then and then uh, it gives me some space and some escape room in case someone comes in lottoing. Now I like I'm, I want to get this piece here. It's a lieutenant. I don't know what this is. This could be a scout or sergeant, maybe. I don't think it's a good piece because he didn't have any good pieces so far on the front row. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping instead of attacking down, I hope he attacks over. And then, but then he probably thinks this is a captain. So if this is a garbage piece, he's probably not going to go over there. He's probably going to go down. But at least give him an opportunity if he's a bad player, you know. He might he might decide to hit and then you go down and then he maybe takes with this piece so you get two pieces and in information instead of just one piece and in information so it's okay to just wait so he goes down so this we get the lieutenant so you, you can assume this piece is he he probably thought this was a captain so captain or better so then he decided to go down so this is going to be a junk piece So now it was kind of interesting. He swapped a known, uh, unknown captain with a known captain. You usually want, don't want to do that unless uh, maybe he was worried I would go down here. And maybe maybe none of these pieces can stop a captain. So maybe there's you know two or three more pieces I could have uh, captured if I would have went down. This is probably not a bomb. Or otherwise, that would be a strange move uh, taking me. He might have just waited here to see if I go down. Hit the bomb. Uh, I have two miners on the front row. This is I just threw this setup together real quickly, and I moved pieces around. And when I started uh, the game, I said, oh, no, I got two miners up front. I don't like having two miners up front. But uh, that was that was by accident. It's when you're in a hurry. So we're just bluffing this piece out of the way. I don't think I don't think this is much, and I don't think this piece is much here. We knew that that was a sergeant. So we'll see what this piece is. Get a sergeant here. We'll bluff again. I'm just testing to see how how you know this guy plays. Is he aggressive? Is he passive? So that was kind of weird. He had two sergeants here. He had two sergeants uh, here, and yeah, but he's he's kind of attacking on both sides.
another thing, this player didn't use uh, his scouts early on. I always hate that when players hold back all their scouts because I like to bluff a lot. And if they have all their scouts in the mid game, then I can't bluff that much. I have to try to bleed all, all their scouts. But then the problem when you don't use your scouts early on is, is you wind up usually going down uh, in lower pieces. Your sergeants, lieutenants, and captains are usually behind because you use them as scouts instead of using scouts. So, you know, there's a trade-off. And uh, it can come back to haunt you. So now I do a little tactic here. I, I've been doing this. Uh, this is like a reverse bluff. I don't know what this piece is. This piece is a captain. Now, normally, uh, players would rush, you know, would either move here, maybe, if, if they found out that this is a captain, they might move here, or they might move here, you know, to chase the captain away. And then the opponent probably will say, well, that's probably a major because people usually attack with plus one. So instead of, uh, uh, you know, uh, instead of um, letting my opponent know that this is basically a major by moving up or over here, I decided to do, a, I call it a reverse bluff, just go backwards to make it look like I'm... Uh, I'm scared of his captain, and so he's going to think this piece is lower than a captain. And this this really works well. Uh, uh, sometimes you might want to tuck this piece down and then bring another piece over to like you're protecting this piece, and then back away, and then maybe later on in the game, your opponent will come down with the captain and run right into your major. It's a very effective uh, technique. Especially if you're playing a little bit better player who's paying attention. It might not work so well on bronze players, but it works, you know, on silver and gold players. So he's coming down. He thinks this is a garbage piece. So now I just move over. He knows this is a captain. He wants to swap captains and maybe get a lower piece. And now he's shocked. He's like, son of a gun. And that trick worked. I don't know what this is. But I'm not too concerned because he had two sergeants and a captain. So it's probably not that good of a piece. I didn't want him to find my general. So it was a minor. So now he knows he knows these three pieces. So I gotta be careful. Right? He knows that these are targets for him to attack. So, you know, but he is down. He's down a captain, a lieutenant, and a sergeant. So he's down three pieces, but he has some targets. So that turned out to be pretty good. So I got rid of one of my pieces and and it's looking like this is probably his weak sign. So we found, you know, captain, a minor, two sergeants. Now we finally get a, a scout. So this is looking like the weak sign. It might be a balance setup, but this is the weak sign. And then his flag's probably over here. Now, I'd like to get some more of his scouts. I need to find some more of his scouts because in the mid game, I like to still do a lot of bluffs and and it's hard to do when they have, you know, five or six scouts left. When they have a lot of scouts, it also limits your ability to uh, bring the spy into the game. So... You'd like to get a lot of their scouts.
there. We got another scout. That's good. So he finally got uh, brave and brought a uh, colonel down. So I really can't bring my uh, general over because he would take my captain. But I probably wouldn't, if the captain wasn't here, I probably would move the colonel anyway and, and try to get uh, the captain and then maybe swap colonels. He's, I think I would have backed away, but it wouldn't have mattered. Now I hope he chases. He's not going for it. And I decided to swap the colonel, so that was good. We get a captain. We get a captain and the uh, two colonels swap. So anytime you get a two for one, that's really good. And now I don't have to protect that colonel. And you want to swap when you're ahead. And I'm ahead two captains. And I'm ahead a sergeant. But I am down a minor and uh, three scouts. So we want to try to get some more of his scouts. You got to try to bleed his scouts. Without revealing... Uh, too many high pieces. Since I'm up with two captains, I can attack with my captains to try to get some uh, lower pieces. So we get a sergeant here. And we find a colonel. So that's good. I wish it was a marshal or general, but when you had a colonel, is okay. Now we can bluff, run at him, see where he goes. Now he's going to think my scout is a high piece. You want to keep track of the colonel. Remember that this is a colonel. So that worked out pretty good. We get a minor. 
and a major for a minor and a scout. That's his colonel, and he thinks this is a high piece here. I'm trying to lead his scouts because he still has six scouts left. And I'd like to like to have him waste a scout on uh, my lieutenant. We found a major, and he's using his miners. He's using all his lower pieces as scouts instead of his scouts. So we have a major here. We have a colonel here. We get a scout. Now that might be the spy because he's running away, or maybe it maybe it could be a high piece, but it could be the spy. Because it was protecting the major. This is a colonel and a major. So he knows this is a minor now. So he knows my minor. So I want to find out what this piece is, because he knows this captain. I don't mind swapping majors just to, to trade if we can, because I'm ahead. I'm up a captain, I'm down a lieutenant, but I'm up two sergeants. So just remember, when people, when people want to trade with you, you got to really look at the scoreboard because uh, they probably think they're ahead. So you got to verify to make sure that, you know, if, if you're behind, don't trade. So that's good. Now he's only has four scouts left. So that's, that's good. He did find this bomb though. You always hate that when, uh, they find your bombs with a scout. So this piece is coming from the back row. It's probably garbage. Now he wants to know what this piece is. So that's his colonel. So 
So now he knows my major here. And now he's going to find out my general. All right, now here, here's a point of the game where I decided to do my uh, bluff tactic that I, I just love doing over and over and over. Every, every I try to do it almost every time I play. Uh, a lot of players don't do this, and they really should. So I want you to look, look, look at my board now. Uh, we don't know much about the opponent. Uh, but look, look at his board. Try to read his board. Try to think, think about where his flag might be, where his high pieces might be. He knows this is a minor. He knows this is now a general, and he knows this is a major. He doesn't know much of anything else. He might think this is a high piece. Maybe this is my marsh or general. Uh, he should know this is a lieutenant, and I know his colonel here. That's pretty much all I know. So now what, what, what bluff tactic do you think might work in this situation? So pause the video, think about it, look at his board, try to read his board. Like I said, the only thing we know is his, he has a, a, a kernel here. And, and that's pretty much it. I think I lost where the spy, one of these pieces might be the spy. I think I, I lost... Uh, track of where it might be or it might be a high piece uh, but try to figure out what what bluff tactic you might do right now to to you know help you win the game all right well what we know if you look at his board i think this was his weak sign and it doesn't look like his flag is over here right and he has this colonel here. This piece hasn't moved. I think this piece might be the marshal guarding the colonel. This is a junk piece. And so I'm thinking, well, where every time I play, I always think the I always say, where do, where is the flag going to be? And you know, four over from the left is usually the most popular. Then four over from the right is the second most popular. So, you know, the flag's not here. This is an empty spot. So then I'm thinking, oh, the flag might be here, right? Bomb, 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 flag. So that looks like a possibility. And with the colonel here and maybe the marshal here. So one thing I like to do when there's like around 20 or so pieces left in the game, I like to bring a miner up. Especially, and this, this bluff tactic works when they don't know your high pieces. And it kind of helps if if their high piece is out of the way or if their high piece, if you know their high piece is, and it's on your side and they don't know your high piece are, or where your high pieces are, you can run up with a miner and you can try to open up a bombed in flag. So like here, since this is the most popular, I could go for the corner. The flag could be in the corner. But I decided, you know, since this is, go with the stats, this is the second most popular spot for a flag. I decided to bring this miner here up the gut and see if I can just open up uh, a possible flag, you know, formation, right? Open up, hit a bomb, and then at least open up his flag. So, you know, that's half the battle. You get the flag open up, then he has to play defense, and, and then, you know, if he he sort of protects that area, then you're pretty sure the flag is where you thought it was. And then, and then since I'm, I'm uh, winning by a little bit here, I'm winning up a captain and two sergeants and only down a lieutenant, it's going to be hard for him to win if I can open up his flag and maybe, you know, the way he plays defense, I can, you know, assume the flag is there and then go for it uh, and, and have a, an attack strategy you know, when you know where the flag is and you just plan to attack and uh, swap out and, and, and maybe win the game that way. So this tactic works really well if you have a minor on the third or second row. 
it doesn't work too well when you have your a piece coming up them from the back row because when a piece comes up from the back row everyone's saying ah oh, that's a no good piece or that's a minor so you want to use a piece uh it's really helpful if you have a piece that hasn't moved from behind the legs because they'll think it's a high piece like a marshal or a general and it also helps when your opponent is losing because they don't want to go down further if you know if, if you're bringing in a high piece and he doesn't have many scouting pieces left right he only has two scouts he's already down to two minors he's used all his sergeants he's used all his captains so he doesn't have many scouting pieces left so that's when this trick really works well when they don't have many scouting pieces left and you think they're high pieces or they're high pieces out of position i think his marshal is here so i'm thinking and i'm like where could his flag be and i'm like yep we're gonna we're gonna do the old the old minor bluff We know that's a colonel. So he hit me with a lieutenant. I don't think he want he didn't want this piece to be revealed. So now I'm coming up with my minor. And I think this is the general. I thought this was the the marshal. So and now this I think this this helped sell it that this was a high piece, that I moved this piece out of the way. Like if this was my marshal coming up. I didn't want the general running down here and attacking my uh, major. I think that helped the bluff, uh, made it more realistic that this was a high piece because I was worried about, you know, if your high piece gets revealed and then you can counter with the general. So I'm, I'm moving this known major out of the way. So I think that helped the bluff a lot. So he's coming over with his colonel. Now he has a decision to make. He goes here. So I, I think this was his general, and this must be his spy. And this is where you don't want to find yourself in. Uh, and this is the problem when you don't know your opponent's high pieces, and you don't have many scouting pieces left. You have a decision to make. It's one of these... Is this his marshal? If it's his marshal and I attack and lose my general, you know, I probably lose the game. But if if his flag is here, all right, and his bomb, bomb, bomb flag, and he doesn't take me, he loses the game. So you don't want to find yourself in this situation. And it's, it's happened to me several times. You have to make that decision. It's one of those 50-50 uh, decisions. I remember. I remember the first time it happened to me. I was playing a player, and I think my general was my highest piece, and it was on my opponent's side, and I didn't know my opponent uh, where his general was, and he came down with a piece right down the middle, and I had a colonel and a major, and he went right after the colonel. I moved the colonel out of the way, then he went towards my major. I moved my major out of the way, and then he went right to my flag and won the game. So it's a terrible feeling, and you're going to lose. You're going to lose a lot of games uh, this way. So you really want to protect your flag and make sure you have pieces uh, surrounding your uh, flag so they can stop uh, this minor bluff tactic. So now he has to think: What is this piece? Is it his marshal or is it a minor? And I think he goes into his. Uh, so he's thinking. So he brings over this piece, and now, now he's feeling sick. <laughs> this is this is you know, this is like well, you got me. He snuck a minor past, and I think this was the marshal, and this was the general, and this was probably the spy. And right now he's probably upset. You can see he's like, oh, if that's a minor, I lost the game son of a gun and so that was pretty good that he didn't he didn't uh he was a really good uh considerate player he didn't uh whine he let me see. i probably would have i probably would have just quit but uh he let me see the flag and then he 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 wrote uh 
he wanted to write to me after the game. I don't know. He was probably going to say, what a great uh, bluff there. Uh, but I didn't get to see the message. But anyway, so that's how uh, you can sneak a miner through. I like to do it when there's like around 20 or so pieces left on the board. You know, 25 pieces. I like to do it like at the maybe the middle of the middle game if you if you divide the game in three. And then, especially if you have if you have all five miners, or if you have more miners than your opponent, you know, my opponent had three miners or two miners left. I had three, so I figured it was worthwhile. And I was leading too, so it was worthwhile to give it a shot. And it worked perfectly. So you tried that. I've won. I've won so many games doing this, uh, but you have to do it in the right situation. Uh, like I said, it helps when he doesn't have a lot of scouting pieces. And if your miner gets scouted, you know, pull it back, save your miner, and then, you know, shuffle it around and maybe he'll for, forget uh, that it was a miner. But, uh, or if it gets scouted, as long as you can get to the bomb where you think it's a bomb, go for it. But yeah, this, this worked out really well because the miner came from, you know, this spot. He didn't know my high pieces. And that's one of the one of the reasons why you want to keep your high pieces hidden as long as possible because you know he didn't know my marshal so then you can do a bluff like this and uh, that worked out really well uh, and he thought here is that's a minor I'm gonna lose and now he's crying right it's it's over so but learn this learn this minor uh, bluff technique like I said you'll You'll win a lot of games. And even if you don't capture the flag, you know, opening up is half the battle. And then it's helpful then if you have a few scouts left, then he always has to have a piece, you know, guarding the flag because, you know, if you have some scouts left, you can attack the flag uh, spot from a distance. So then he's always going to have to have a piece here, you know, blocking access to the flag. So anyway, hope you like this game, uh, and uh, hope you learned something, and we'll work on another one. Thanks for watching. Bye.